When it comes to making money in Star Citizen, there are many ways to go about it, from bounty hunting to mining and everything in between. And yet, with all these methods, one of the most reliable and favoured in this space game doesn't even have you in the pilot seat at the time. And chances are, if you've been playing Star Citizen for a while, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Citizens, my name's Beard of Oz and today we'll be talking about bunker missions. I'll go over how to get started, the grind versus benefits, and how this avenue can open up other opportunities. If you enjoy this video or learn anything new, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. I've moved my streams from Twitch to YouTube, so if you're interested in watching me get stranded on Daymar, be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I'm about to go live. Alright, let's dive in. So, as it stands, bunker missions fall under the mercenary tab in the missions section of the Moby Glass. They're linked to the reputation of four security factions within Stanton, each in their own planetary jurisdiction. Crusec in Crusader, Hurston Dynamics in, you guessed it, Hurston, Microtech Protection Services in Microtech, and just to spice things up and not be lame and unoriginal, Blackjack Security in Art Corp. There is a fifth security faction in Stanton with active missions, and that's Northrock. But currently in 3.19.1, they really have more of an influence with ship-based bounty hunting and box collection. But perhaps that will change in the future when the newer UGFs make their way into the PU. The bunker missions themselves are reasonably straightforward, requiring you to travel to an underground facility that has been infiltrated by pirates, namely Nine Tails. Eliminate them while simultaneously not killing the friendly security factions within. Upon the successful completion of the mission, a sum of Alpha UEC will be awarded to the players involved, generally between 15 and 90,000 Alpha UEC depending on the tier of the mission, as well as reputation towards the associated security faction and that's that. Now, something to note here. The bunkers themselves are defended by a series of automated turrets that will violently dispatch any ship that comes within their range that does not have the appropriate clearance, and in case you didn't already know, this includes hoverbikes too. Wheeled vehicles, however, do not raise the ire of these hyper-aggressive death slingers. I for one would like to know how Ninetales keep managing to infiltrate these facilities so easily considering this fact. Perhaps they live in the bunkers, like a subterranean race of mole men. I don't know, but I digress. The only way to not be attacked by these turrets is to have the appropriate defense mission active, which will then provide the necessary clearance to not be ripped from the sky by a stream of red death. One very important note here. If you're running these missions with friends, all members of your ship's crew will need to have the mission shared with them, or they could bring about absolute ruin upon the rest of the crew. There are variants of the bunker missions that do not give clearance from turrets, and I'll go over that later in the video. So, let's break down the process. Navigate to the missions tab of your Moby Glass, and under general, you'll find the mercenary section. There you'll find the mission requiring you to defend a site against intruders. You'll see the location of the facility that requires assistance and the payout involved. The tier 1 missions have 10 hostiles that need to be eliminated and sometimes you'll find that security has already begun reducing the number for you as you arrive. Take the mission, get in your ship and jump to the location. The majority of the bunkers have a quantum jump marker, though if you're taking missions in Hurston or Microtech, there are some unmarked locations on the planets and moons that will require a bit of a longer schlep. Now remember, if you're playing with others, you'll need to share the mission with them and ensure they've accepted it. If you don't, those turrets will open fire upon anyone without the needed clearance. Once you've touched down, head to the entrance, go inside, and take the elevator down to the subterranean levels. Now you can bring weapons and armor if you want, but you can also be adventurous and bring little to no gear. I'll leave that to your discretion, but for the sake of this video, I'll say bring some armor, a weapon, and some medical pens. Now the number of enemies needed to be dispatched will be displayed on your HUD so long as you have the mission tracked. Speaking of missions, make sure you've got call to arms accepted. Every little bit of extra money counts. If you're doing higher tiered missions like the defend against minor threats, the number of enemies you'll need to dispatch will be higher, though these higher tiered missions will give you a 60 second head start, so if you are running in with less gear you'll be able to do a quick sweep for guns and ammo in these red crates. These higher tiered missions will have multiple waves of enemies with a 60 second breather between each wave to allow you to regroup, reload and heal. 
Once you've completed the mission, you'll receive the payout, the reputation, and be given the ever so polite warning to get out within 15 minutes or be marked as hostile. But, and I must stress this, be careful. If you happen to accidentally kill one of the security personnel within, you'll fail the mission, receive a reduction to your reputation, and if the Comare is up, a crime stat, and your ship will be destroyed. So yeah, don't do that. I'm going to be honest with you, bunkers are a grind. They're a hell of a grind. The introductory mission and the subsequent missions in the first tier will award 15,000 Alpha UEC spread amongst the players that have the mission. And it's going to take hundreds of these missions to get you to tier 5, which has a 90k payout for each successful mission completed. So let's break down everything in terms of reputation and rank. Rank 1 will allot you the standard 15k defend missions. Rank 2 will unlock the contraband missions, more on that shortly. Rank 3 is where it starts getting good, with the defend minor threats running at 65,000 alpha UEC. Rank 4 will increase the defend payouts to 75k with the moderate threats, and the final and coveted rank 5 will unlock serious threats at 90k payout. The contraband missions will also increase in these higher ranks. While it might seem like a rather large undertaking to get to level 5, the grind will be paying out not only each individual payout but also the extra so long as you have call to arms active, not to mention bunkers being a great source of free gear. As it stands in 3.19.1, only Crusader and Hurston have bespoke armor, with Microtech and R Corp fielding very simple color coordinated though simple sets. You'll find a mix of light to heavy armor in both the allied and enemy AI, as well as the possibility to find harder to find random pieces in these red chests. Now amongst these bunker missions is a secondary set known as the Contraband Missions. I mentioned those before. They offer a tempting reward, but be warned, they come at a cost of time. These are the bunkers I warned you about that do not offer clearance, so you'll need to land outside of their turrets range and make your way on foot, or if you've got a vehicle, you can take that. Now remember, hover bikes will still be fired upon, so stick to something with wheels. When you get there, you'll notice the mission marker says locate stash. If you venture further in, you'll see there are empty pallets. These are where the 18th SCU crates of contraband will spawn that need to be destroyed. Sadly, they take a long time to load in, and if you destroy any before the full amount have spawned in, you can cause the mission to bug out and not complete. Like this one here for me. If you have the patience of a saint and can wait it out, you'll need to go in, kill the nine tails within, and destroy the hundreds of crates to receive your reward. You'll get a little bit of extra cash for each crate destroyed, but honestly, you could complete several regular bunker missions in the time it takes for just one of these. While the reputation system in Star Citizen is still rather threadbare, there are some benefits to be had for building up your relationship with these factions. Besides the obvious financial gain, Crusader Security have the added bonus of letting their Tier 4 and 5 contractors within the fly space of Security Post Korea in Selen's orbit. You can approach and land at the station with no hostilities received, and should you enter the station, you'll receive a 15 minute trespass warning. A particularly useful bonus if you're a bounty hunter looking to intercept a player who's looking to clear their crime stat. During 3.18, Crusader Security would also offer missions on the floating platforms reserved for the Siege of Oris and Dynamic event, but sadly they were removed with the arrival of 3.19. Hopefully, we'll see them return again soon. And there you have it, a simplified guide to bunker missions in Star Citizen. A bunker's your primary source of income? Which region is your favourite? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, hit that like button and if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel. As I mentioned, I now stream on YouTube, so be sure to stop by and say hi. Be sure to check out this video here, and this video too. I think they're pretty cool. Stay safe in the verse, citizens and I'll catch you all next time.